Hello, y'all. So, as you can tell by the fact that not only is this video, like, three weeks late, three weeks into June, um, and that my hair looks like this, and that I'm going to be working on an outfit in the middle of this video while I'm talking to you, um, it's been a very, very busy month. It's been a very, very busy month. I've had no time to do anything. Um, it's really go, 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 go. Um, but I knew that I'd be going to be out of town. I'm literally getting on a flight in, like, what time is it? Like, less than 16 hours I'm gonna be on a flight, and I'm not at all packed and I'm not really prepared, and I'm also going out to the club tonight. So, we got things to do. I don't know even how or when I'm going to have time to edit this video, um, but we needed a video for next week because I'm gonna be out of town next week, and I still have not done my update video. So, that is going to be this. Now, May, a lot of things happened in May. A lot of them were mostly work-related, uh, mostly just me trying not to quit my job. Um, I, I was successful, I still work there, so. Uh, is that a win? We'll see. The main two things that happened during May were I saw TXT and I went to K-Play Fest. Um, and wow, TXT, what an experience. We're going to just spoil the ending and I'm going to input some photos right here. So just know as I tell you this harrowing tale that everything will eventually be okay. Why did my video stop recording? Who knows? But I had send off and nobody knew how send off was gonna go. And there were already people like four days in advance camping out for the show. And I, this is the thing, I hate this venue. I love the uh, like technical elements of this venue. I feel like the, the sound quality is always really good no matter where I go, but I fucking hate the, the people that work there. <laughs> because tell me why, it says on their website, literally everywhere, no camping, no lines will be honored and lighting is going to start uh, at 11 a.m. when check-in starts. No, it said specifically like no lining up on property prior to 11 a.m. And I knew that they were going to not uphold this because no fucking venue ever does. So I call them and email them multiple times to be like, how are you going to enforce this? Because also, and Hypen was just there like a couple weeks ago and they didn't follow this rule either. So I, I was like really trying to hold them to be like, what rules are you gonna put in place with your security to make sure that this rule that you tell everybody is going to actually be enforced and implemented? And they had no answer for me because they're fucking liars. And I, I now know this because I'm going to go back there like next month to see 80s. Now I know that they're fucking liars. And this is what happens when you don't uphold your own rules. Like don't make a rule if you're not gonna keep it. And that's the thing, I wanna make it so clear. And, and also, if you're like camper defenders, get the fuck out of here. I'm, no. I fucking think campers are weird. I think that y'all shouldn't do that shit. It ruins the experience for literally everybody. And I don't support or condone it literally whatsoever. So if you're gonna get in my comments and be like, Oh my god, but like, you're trying to cut all the campers, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, cause fuck y'all. First of all. Second of all, if they were able to game the system better than me, I respect that. It's, this is fully a hate the game, not the player situation. I don't have any beef with any specific people. I hate the whole system that we are forced to be in because they fucking wanted to give us GA send off. And that's the thing, I love being a GA. But in that same vein, I should not have to show up at like 11 a.m. to line up for a 1 p.m. check-in for a 7 p.m. concert. That's not very VIP of you. You should just give us our numbers for check-in when we buy our ticket. It should be that fucking simple. There should be a number with a ticket. So you can show up whenever the fuck you want and you already have your number because the number comes with a ticket because you got it when you bought it. It should be that fucking simple, but no. Anyways, there was no way for me to get down there any earlier than like 11 a.m. because I got off work the night before I midnight and I knew that I could like in theory get down there like right after I got off work and just like camp out like overnight, but one, that'd be fucking ridiculous. And two, I'd be so tired. Like what's the point of going to a concert that you paid 700 fucking dollars for if you're going to be so exhausted the entire time because you spent half of the day outside just sort of standing around waiting for the show to start. That doesn't sound like a good time. So I was trying to figure out from the staff of the venue what the fuck the plan was gonna be so that I could plan accordingly. And also like, I wanna make it so clear. They obviously can't say, yeah, we're gonna allow campers because that's gonna encourage people to camp or whatever, but also like you can't then allow campers because people are gonna do it anyways if they know that you're not gonna force shit. But if at any point anybody at that facility were to tell me, yes, we do say that we're not gonna honor campers, but there's no way for us to stop them. So it is likely that campers will be getting to the front of the line. If someone was just fucking honest with me and didn't kept saying, no, show up at 11, show up at 11, you'll be fine, show up at 11, I wouldn't have so many fucking problems with them. If they weren't fucking lying straight to my face, we wouldn't have any fucking problems. You see, I'm still fucking pissed off at them because that was such fucking bullshit. Like, don't lie to me. Because I knew that they were lying too and I gave them many opportunities to not fucking lie to me. The day of the show comes around 
I get ready. I get in my car. I drive the hour to the fucking venue to get there at 10.55, right before 11, when they say no lines will start on property prior to 11 a.m. to see a line of like 150 fucking people already on property. And so I go specifically up to security. And this is... Y'all, I already have problems with authority. That's the thing. I don't like men telling me what the fuck to do because how fucking dare you? What the fuck do you know that I don't know? I don't like men. <laughs> and whenever they fucking try to tell me to do something, it pisses me off. But I go up to the front of the line and I try to ask the security to be like, they said, your people said many, many fucking times, no lines of property prior to 11 a.m. And this is clearly a line that's going to be let in. So what the fuck is going on? I obviously said it. Very, I said it very respectfully. I'm not, I'm not being respectful now because I'm pissed the fuck off, but I was very respectful there because why would I be disrespectful to the security who are just trying to do their jobs? But once again, they were not respectful to me. So I hope that they choke and die, but they were just saying, yeah, yeah, we're not honoring campers. So anybody that like has a, like a thing on their hand saying that they showed up at this time and they got this number, we're not honoring that. But I'm like, but this is a line. And this is prior to 11 a.m. And you're about to let this line in. So, like, what time did this line start forming? And they said, oh, well, merch started at 10. So, like, the line started at 10. Why didn't anyone fucking tell me that? That's what I want to know. Why, during any of the interactions I had with customer service, did they not fucking tell me that they were going to start letting people line up at 10 when merch started? And then, on top of that, the fucking security guy wanted to be like, we're about to start letting people in so you got to get to the back of the line. Which is fucking crazy because, once again, it's not 11 a.m. There should be no fucking line. According to their rules, there should be no line prior to 11 a.m. So there should be no line for me to get to the back of if it is prior to 11 a.m. But I do as I'm told. Because I'm not fucking starting shit and getting kicked out before the show even starts. But that's where we're already starting. I'm running on barely eight hours of sleep after working like 28 hours in the past 48 hours. I was tired as hell. And I just drove an hour to fucking get down to the stupid venue. And then the line isn't even started because 11 a.m. is when the line starts. 11 a.m. is when the line's supposed to start for check-in. We then have to sit or stand and wait for another two hours until one o'clock when the check-in actually starts. Which is fucking ridiculous. And here's where I fucked up because I just sort of sat there and waited in line because I was like, I better get merch after because again, what the fuck is the point of having early access to merch inside the venue because you get early access to the venue if all of the merch is going to be sold and sell out outside of the fucking venue that shit pisses me off oh it's happened so many times at so many different k-pop concerts and i'm like why why do you not properly stock inside the venue so the people who actually paid fucking money to see your show can make sure that they get the merch that they want it's, I think it's ridiculous. Like, I get that you just want to, like, sell what you can sell because you don't want to miss out any on any possible revenue no matter who it's from, but I think it's fucking ridiculous that I pay extra money to get in so that I can get early access to merch. And yes, there was an early, like, VIP line for the merch booth outside. Blah, 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 blah. Womp, 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 womp. That's not what I'm fucking talking about. It doesn't make any fucking sense that I pay extra money to get into the venue early so I could get access to the merch inside the venue early and then they're like, oh yeah, we sold out of that outside. What the fuck do you mean? What the fuck did I pay all this money for? It pisses me off. I wait the two fucking hours until check-in starts. And then for some reason, our check-in line takes so fucking long. And then we wait like another like hour and a half until like 2.30, 3 o'clock until we get to check-in because the line just takes so fucking long to get through, which is crazy. Cause I'm like, you had many hours to prepare. You saw how long the line was because I was like, maybe 10th from the end of the line. Most of the people for VIP one had showed up way earlier. So like you knew, also you knew beforehand because you knew how many tickets you sold, how many people you needed to allocate to get check-in done. So why the fuck did VIP two get checked in faster than us? It doesn't make any fucking sense and it pisses me off. Anyways, know that this is the energy that I'm coming in with. Okay, I'm already sitting outside waiting for two hours in the sun, not having a good time because I'm fucking tired and I have to w do all this fucking waiting around. Again, it, it doesn't make any sense that like the VIP has so many other extra hoops to jump through because I'm paying more money. I should be getting VIP treatment. This is not VIP treatment. But we finally fucking check in. I go get all my merch just to fucking find out that the one shirt that I wanted, the like venue, like city specific shirt is fucking sold out. And I could have gotten it if I had just gotten it right when I first fucking got there, but I didn't know that because who the fuck would have thought that this shirt would have sold out and that they wouldn't have stocked any indoors. So that pissed me off. 
I got everything else that I wanted though, so I got like my lucky draws and blah 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 blah. blah. Also, we didn't fucking get Melozone. Houston got Melozone, but we didn't get Melozone. We were the first fucking shop in the tour we didn't get Melozone. Big Hit, I fucking hate you. You're pissing me off, Big Hit. You and your fucking dynamic pricing, I hate you. Anyways, we check in, go back to the car, eat some food, get ready, do the rest of my like outfit because I only like partially got like my outfit together. I didn't put on any of the accessories or the makeup because I was going to do that after check-in even though we were supposed to get back to the venue at like 5 and it was like 3 o'clock, maybe after 3, maybe it was like 3.30, I don't know. I'll, all I know is we had like maybe a little under two hours to like reset before we had to get back to the venue, which was a lot less time than we thought we were going to have. Because again, fucking hate this venue. And while we were waiting in line to like get checked in for VIP one, someone from like the staff comes around and they give us cookies, which I think is fucking like, go fuck yourself. I don't know. Y'all were already pissing me off at this point. So like, I don't know what a cookie the fuck is going to do for me. Also, I'm 100% sure that I tasted peanut butter at that and there was no allergen information on the cookie. So I think it's absolutely crazy that they were feeding the public peanut butter when that is a very common food allergy. But I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> when you are given your VIP wristband. Also, the number that I got was fucking horrible. I got like number 240. And if you're Chinese, you know why the fuck that number is so bad, which is crazy because my friend who I checked in with, she like got her wristband right before me because she had like the ticket in her thing. So they gave her her wristband first. She was 239. They just wanted me to kill myself, but whatever. When they give you your wristband for check-in, they give you your number that you're going to be led into the venue with. And that's another thing. Neither my friend nor I really cared about getting a high number for the concert because we wanted to stand at the back. I'm, I'm gonna stand in the back. I'm gonna have my fun. I'm not gonna get like super close to the stage. I did for Soundcheck, but I did not for like the actual concert. Also, the only good thing about Soundcheck now is that they have stopped enforcing that you can't film it. Like I got to film for Itzy when I saw them like earlier this month and then I got to film for TXT and I'm like, as we should, we paid all this goddamn money and we can't film it. That's crazy. So I'm glad that they're stopping that. <laughs> you get your wristband. And we got like a low number, but we didn't really care about getting a high number. We only did because we thought that getting a high number for being let into the venue would give you a similarly high number for getting let into send off because we wanted a good spot for send off, obviously, because that's what we paid all this money for. But they also gave you a ticket, like a like a seating ticket, a seated ticket, um, along with your wristband. And I had read somewhere on Twitter that what you do like after the concert is like you go and you sit in like your seat that your ticket is given and then I thought that they were going to call like row by row but I didn't know like what order that was going to be in I assumed similarly to the wristbands that it was like in that order that the tickets were going to be like called in the same order as you know your wristband ticket so like if I got 240 for the venue I was going to get 240 for sign off which was like fucking stupid because why did I pay all this fucking money for them? Another thing that I realized is that in my way of like rushing out the house because I had to get to this venue that was again an hour away, um, I forgot my portable charger and my phone was at like 40%. Just keep that in mind, keep that in mind. In the merriment of lists of bad things that were going for me that day, that was a, that was a big one on my list. But we go, we go into the venue. I try to go to the merch tables to see if they have the shirt that I want. And they were like, no, we sold it. We sold out outside, which I'm like, okay, that's fucking ridiculous but that's not the merch people's fault um so i'm like just just know that i'm like about this level of pissed off i'm so pissed off this entire fucking time and i'm like when txt gets on stage i'm gonna have my fun but just know that i'm gonna burn this whole folder to the ground because i fucking hate every single one of you piss me off i'm so pissed off but we get inside we get our spots sound check starts sound check was fun i'm like barricade for sound check uh, which was a beautiful gift, like center stage, center extended stage barricade for soundcheck. Hell yeah. Had a wonderful experience, got to see all my boys. Um, I love TXG, so that was great. Um, the soundcheck ends, I go back to sit with my friend. Well, we stand really just like towards the back, because like the GA section is like sort of fenced off, and we just stood towards the back of the fence. Uh, my phone at this point is maybe at like 32%. I keep texting everybody at the venue that I know if I could get like a portable charger, none of my friends have any, so I'm like, I guess my phone's gonna die. Um, but that's the worst thing, because I'm like, I need my phone to be alive for send off, because if I can't get a video for send off, they're like, what the fuck are we doing? Especially because I have a Samsung. I have a Samsung. And TXT were doing this whole thing where they were like, sorry, we can't take photos with iPhone, Samsung only. And I'm like, I got that Samsung Z Flip 5. My Stray Kids package. I have a Samsung. Fuck all you iPhone bitches. I used to be down in the trenches like you, but I have 
seen the light. Anyways, I get, I, also the, the show starts turning up because after soundcheck, I also go get myself a drink. And I'm not saying that the, the double tequila drink that I had fixed everything, but I'm saying that there's a sharp difference between what happens before getting that drink and after getting that drink. Before getting that drink is all this, all this mess that pissed me the fuck off. Um, and then afterwards, I get my little sippy sip, I walk around, I make, I make some friends, um, I confirm that none of the, uh, merch tents or merch booths in the venue have that shirt. Still a little pissed off, but that's fine. I drink my drink and I go stand in the, in the GA area for the show. Now, again, my phone is at, like, maybe 20% at this point. My phone is going to die during the concert if I record anything, so... I make the conscious choice not to record anything, at least for the beginning part, because another thing that I noticed is that I was standing towards like the back of like, if the stage is coming this way, I was standing towards the back. And in this area, there was like seats, I think for like the ADA area. And there were some like older women, like mom age people over there. And I saw that one of the ladies had a portable charger in her bag. And I'm like, am I going to be so bold as to ask her to use her charger? And I did not for like the first 40 minutes um, of like, the, the venue filling up because I was like, oh, I don't want to ask. That's like so rude of me. That's like so inconveniencing of her, blah, 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 blah. Um, but then it's like maybe 15 minutes to the show and I can't find a portable charger anywhere. And I also can't get any like service in the venue. So I can't like DM any of my friends whose numbers I don't have that are also in the venue. So I'm like, I need to ask somebody because I need to, my phone cannot die for send off at the very least. Um, so I do ask her maybe like 10 minutes before the show starts if I can use her charger. And she graciously let me, that woman truly saved my life. I hope she's doing so well. She was so kind to let me use her charger because she was also using her charger, but it had like two little ports where she could plug it. So she plugged in my phone as well. And I'm like, thank you, that woman. I wish her all, only the best in life because she was so kind to me and that was so, ah, uh, she truly saved my life because otherwise I would not have gotten those photos that I just showed you if she did not let me use her charger. So like, honestly, I love that woman. She was so kind to me. But show starts, I'll film maybe like the first like hour of the show because I'm like, I need to sit and let my phone charge. But by like, I think it was ghosting? Ghosting, because like also the first like maybe eight or so songs, I was like, I like these songs, but like, I don't need to film them. That's the thing. I was like fully in the moment, not worried about anything, just like vibing, dancing, having a great time. By the time that Ghosting came on, Ghosting is one of my favorite songs. And I was like, well, I gotta film Ghosting. So then I get my phone back from her. It's like at 50 or 60%. And I was like, okay, that's good enough. So I take that and I thank her so much once again for letting me use her charger. And then I go and I film some of the show depending on how like good the song was and how much I wanted to film it and how my battery was doing. Like I was trying to like meter how much I was using my phone because I needed my phone to be good for send off. Uh, the venue is like sort of stadium like set up where it's like bleachers, like metal bleachers. And a thing that we do for all shows, we do this also for twice, is like the stomping. It's a crazy acoustic sound. And the entire time, Yeonju specifically on, on stage was like, oh my God, I love you guys. Which is so like affirming because literally right before this, they were in Seoul and they were like, I know you guys are gonna miss us so bad bad but I promise we're gonna just go for a little bit and we will be right back and we will miss you guys so much and I'm like the fuck are we chopped liver you're coming to see Moa too like fuck oh K stands always get the best treatment and it pisses me off K stands Japanese fans they get treated so much better than us it's like they don't even want to see us it's like they don't care about us and I'm like okay fuck you too then bitch I don't want to see you anyways so seeing Yeonjun so like enamored and taken with us was like so nice because I was like yeah this is why you come to America and this is why you treat your American Mela so well because we treat you so well. You see how loud we are? That's another thing. Like during soundcheck, they were like, your energy is so good. Keep this energy up for us. And then by the end of the concert, they were like, you guys started so with so much energy. We were worried that you guys were going to burn yourselves out, but you guys are still partying so hard. And we're like, yeah, we love TXT, especially because this is their first time here. I was like, this, that's also another reason why I was like, I have to get VIP one because I need them to know that the, that MOA in this area love them so bad and that they must come back. And I think that we will live forever in their hearts. Because even like when they were doing their lives for their other shows, like at the end of their other concerts, they were still talking about us. Because they're obsessed with us. They're obsessed with us. They love us. They love us so bad. So that was great to see. Because I'm like, yeah, we're kind of the best. You kind of have to come back. You kind of should have come here on your last tour. But it's whatever. It's fine. We're righting the wrongs now. We are righting the wrongs now. Concert was super fun. Concert was great. They, they did cat and dog. Again, English version. But Yeonjun, for the second verse, he sings the beginning part, the feel like Cinderella, nigga, viole. And then he did the rest in English, because that's like, that's the part that I really, really care about in the Korean version. And he sang it for us, even though it was the English version. I love Yeonjun for that. Yeonjun and I, we are best friends. Subin, that's my man. But Yeonjun and I, best fucking friends. And he was like so obsessed with us. And I, I loved that. That was, a, that was beautiful. 
So the concert, super fun. Had a fantastic time. I love TXT so bad. Um, I thought that I wasn't gonna cry because like these past like TXT concerts because I love TXT so bad. I anytime they play Blue Spring, I think the last like four times I seen them they perform Blue Spring and I would just stop because Blue Spring. Oh my god, that song fucks me up so bad. And I was like, well, Blue Spring isn't on the set list. I'm safe. Psych. They performed. Um, I'll see you there tomorrow. And I was like, I like I got so emo because I was like. We are meant to be, and I will see you that tomorrow. Actually, damn, it was such a good song. Oh, they were such, they were so good live too. We got Puma, Puma, I fucking love Puma. And we just got like such a wonderful like show. And I'm so happy that I paid 700 fucking dollars to see them. Do I wish it was less money? Yes, of course. But do I think that TXT deserves every dollar of that? Yes. Do I understand that they're not going to get every dollar of that? Yes, but I don't want to think about it. Anyways, show was incredible. Um, oh, another thing, and this is why I think perhaps the world decided to give me some good fortune, is because, like, a thing that I love to do during shows is collect confetti, and considering that I'm, like, closest to the stage because I'm in, like, the GA pit, all the confetti is, like, landing in our section, and I know that, like, if I were outside of the GA section, the only thing that I ever want when... I'm not in like the, the area closest to the stage is for somebody to give me confetti. That's all that I want. I want a little piece of souvenir to take home. So when the confetti would come down and then they would get off stage or there would be a VCR break, I would go, I would grab confetti and I would bring it to the outside of the fence. I would rob and hood some of the confetti because I was like, the people back here also deserve confetti. And it seemed like everybody in like the, the area behind me was very thankful. There were people running up to get some confetti and being like, thank you so much. And I'm like, it's truly no problem because they're literally going to throw this away. That's the thing that also, also pisses me off is like whenever a concert's over and people are going down to the stage to, to try and get confetti, all of like the security people will be like, no, you have to go. And I'm like, I literally just want pieces of paper that you're going to throw away. Give me my fucking confetti. I don't know. I got issue with security people. I do think that this act of kindness on my part gave me a lot of goodwill with the universe because when the concert ends, we all go to our like stadium seats to like go get sent into like the room for send off and they say that they're going to be calling like seats slash rows randomly because that's the fairest way to do send off. So that's when it's sort of revealed that like, okay, send off has nothing to do with the wristband you got. So I'm like, perhaps we could get a good spot for send off if it's going to be random, which is great. And I love this system. This is the system that we should also do for ATs and for all groups going forward because I do not want to have to show up anywhere early for send off because that's stupid. But we sit down in our seats. They're like, okay, we're going to call rows. And I think mine was like row L, seat 11. First row they called. They were like, row L, you go. We were the first row called. I was like the 11th person in line to get into the send off room. So we get in and it's just like, it's kind of like a petting zoo. I don't, I don't really like it. It looks weird. The way that they did it in Houston was so smart. It's like sort of like a ramp with like a railing and everybody's on one side of the railing and then they come down and everybody gets their moment because I don't like how like the rooms have rows of people because the people in the back get no time or experience with the people that they paid all this fucking money to do send off for. It's not right. But Houston did it really well and I think that everybody should implement a system like that. But they basically put us in this room with like this sort of fenced off area in the middle again feeling very petting zoo um and I go and there's just like wide range to pick from and I go and I cement my hand on that railing and I'm like we're so good I've got barricade for send off and that's the only barricade that matters to me so I'm freaking out because again I thought that if I showed up late I was not going to get a good spot for send off so at no point in this show or during this day was I thinking what do I want to say to them what do I want to get signed what do I want to do because I didn't think that this was a possibility to happen to me I didn't think that any I didn't think that I thought that I missed my opportunity by showing up late so I was like it's whatever I, mean, I guess I'm just gonna see them I'm gonna like yell hi it's gonna be whatever but then I'm like I'm barricade I need to like I need to plan something and that lack of planning did come to bite me in the ass because I fully blacked out. Because one of the main reasons that I wanted to get sent off was to see how tall Tuba 2 actually is. Because I'm a stallion. I'm sitting comfortably at six foot. And I was like, they always say that Subin's six two, that like Yeonjun's six foot. I was like, I don't think that these men are actually that tall. I think K Profiles is lying to the public. So I was like, I need to figure out for once and for all who's actually that tall. Um, and by the time that they came around, I completely blacked out. I could not, I could not tell you anything that happened in that experience, thank god I was filming, because I was like, I, it was, it was just, it was like, oh my god, TXT's here, oh my god, TXT's here, 
So they come around and I get selfies with each and every one of them, as you saw from, from the video. So it was an incredible time. I got I got a selfie with Subin. Me and Subin selfie. I'ma show it again. Look at me and my man. Oh, it's so cute, bitch. I love this photo of me and Subin. I don't even know how I'm supposed to like commemorate it. I genuinely think I'm gonna get it like professionally printed and framed because it's so cute. And it's me and Subin. And I, afterwards, people were like, you could get something signed and also get a photo. But it like. That's another thing. They rushed them way too fucking much during send-off. We paid an extra like $200, $300 on top of VIP2 to be in this room with them. That means that these 250-ish people paid a good $200 each. You do the math on how much money that is. These boys can stay in the room for an extra five minutes to say hi to everybody. Respectfully. It just seems so ridiculous because the way they... I'm trying to remember the order that they went in. I think it was like... Because Subin was last. Subin was last. It was like Bum Yu, Taehyun, Yunjun, Hyuka, Subin. That was the order that they went in. And by the time they were getting around to Yunjun, like the staff members, like had their uh, hand on his back and were like, "We have to go. Keep it, keep it moving. Hurry up!" And I'm like, "We're only halfway through the boys. We, you shut the fuck up." <laughs> I get it. We're on a schedule or whatever, but we paid a lot of fucking money to say hi to them or to say bye to them because it's said enough. It just seemed really ridiculous that they were rushing them so much because I was like, "We paid a lot of money." <laughs> A lot of fucking money for send off. The least you could do is let them stay and say bye to everybody. But I got to have my beautiful send off moment. I got to I got to take photos with all of them. They're all so cute. Also, not to, I, I I say that I blacked out because I cannot confirm like without a shadow of a doubt that Subin specifically is not six foot, but he was not like noticeably that much taller than me. I feel like when we were t maybe because he was like sort of like leaning forward to like sign things for people, but I don't think he was that tall. Bumkyu, Taehyun, Hyuka, decidedly shorter than me. No ifs, ands, buts about it. They were shorter than me. We were not making eye contact. I can, I can say that for certainty. Yunjun, I think, was about my height, and Subin could have been taller than me, but not by a lot. You know, you know, 80s, you know, that man is tall. I've stood next to him during KCON. That man is tall. Subin is not as tall as you know. I can say that with a certainty. Um, but again, I was not really paying attention because I was just like, oh my god, TXT! Oh my god, it's TXT! So, in the end, it all worked out. And I, once again, cannot stress enough, my friend, who I went with, she held it down. Because, I, as you can tell from my vibe, at the beginning of the day, I was such a negative Nancy. I was not a good person to be around because I was so upset the entire fucking time. And the whole time, she was like, don't worry about it, it's gonna work out. And she kept reassuring me, and it literally did. So thank you to my friend. She held it down for us. She kept the good vibes going and I really appreciate her. In the end, it all worked out, but my God, I hate that fucking menu and I hope that they all choke. And when I show up for 80s, I'm gonna know that they're fucking liars when they say, oh no, don't show up before 11. Liars, dirty fucking liars, hate them, hate them bad. And 80s, I will be more prepared because I will be getting barricade again and it's going to be a great experience. I'm so excited. But that was TXT. The only other big thing that happened during May was K-Play Fest. Now, K-Play Fest, I've never been. I know that it was a big thing in LA. This was its first time, like, sort of going out of LA, um, like, traveling, going on tour. And I was like, I would love uh, to see K-Play Fest because also I remember, like, one of the years, like, Beaumont was there. I think maybe last year, the year before, Beaumont was there. So I was like, oh, the performers are going to be good. It was... See, I don't even know how to say his name. Shikke? Shikke? I don't know that man. Um... He was the only performer there, so I was like, oh, that's a little bit late. But I do love K-pop things, as you can tell. I love um, little K-pop trinkets. So I was like, at the very least, I'm gonna spend a lot of money. And there was a uh, photo card trading. So I was like, Ugh, I'm gonna get so many good photo cards. And that I did, y'all. I must have spent at least a band on photo cards. Like I spent so much fucking money on photo cards. So much money. Also because there was like a booth, I think it was like Instacart. Not Instacart, but like Instant Card. I don't know. They were like the sponsors of the event. And they had like two booths just filled with binders and binders of photo cards. And I, the first thing I did on day one, I went straight there and I was like, show me your Changbin binder. Show me your Changbin binder right now. And I bought so many photo cards. Now, I did buy a signed Changbin photo card because I did not know that during the, that's also another thing. This um, convention center because there were so many people in the area the service in there was so bad and that really pissed me off That was really stressful because I was trying to like look up the photo cards as I was like flipping through the binder to be like How much does this go for on Mercari? Am I getting a good, good deal blah 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 and 
I uh, could not like look anything up because nothing was loading. Um, that also made like paying people really hard because like a lot of people like, well, I didn't realize so many people would take cash. I did not bring enough cash. I brought maybe like $200 in cash because I was like, that's all I really need. Most people should take card. A lot of people would give you discounts if you if you gave them cash. And I was like, shit, I should have brought a lot of cash. I know now for next year. Hopefully they come back next year because I had such a good time. At, at the very least, just like spending money. All I did the first day was spend money. Um, I did some photo card trading, but I mostly just spent money. And it was like such a good time. I got so many shot my photo cards. All oh, right, the Maxident photo card. I got Maxident photo card and it was signed. And I'm almost certain that it was fake because I, I didn't think about it in the moment because I just saw it and I saw that like there were companies so I thought that they might have like validated or like authenticated the photo card in some way. But the way that Changbin draws his signature, like with the eyes and the V, it looked nothing like that photo card. And I was like, he never draws his eyes like this. He did, like the smile is all off. So like I spent $60 on that signed photo card and I'm almost certain it was fake, but I did resell it on Mercari. So no harm done to me. If the if, if it ends up being real, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with losing out on that opportunity because I I could not comfortably feel in my heart that that was a real photo card um, or a real signed photo card. Because I think it was a real photo card, obviously, but I think somebody else just like drew in silver sharpie on it because I was like, that's not how Charmin does a signature. Anyways, I got a lot of photo cards that day. And I bought a lot from like regular people as well because this booth was trying to sell like their um, Superstar photo cards for like $50, $60. And I found somebody on day two who were just like them for like 20, 30. And I was like, allyship, thank you. So I got so many good chocolate photo cards. I got so many 17 photo cards. I have somehow become like an OT13 trading card collector. I don't know how, I don't know why. Um, so now I'm trying, now I have like, 12 tracking list for all of their like trading cards and I am going to like have a full uh, Meow Cafe like binder chest for their trading cards. I'm so excited to buy it. I'm gonna buy it once I get back from this trip. I'm so excited. It's gonna be beautiful. Um, because I love 17 and I love numbers. My my therapist says it's because I'm autistic and I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. Um, but I love numbers. So anytime a photo card in the back is a number, I'm like, oh, I have to have a whole set. That's why I'm also doing an OT13 Ataka collection, which is, again, fucking crazy, because Ataka photo cards are so good. I got so many good photo cards. I bought so many things from today. Um, Pastel Star Laws, one of my favorite, um, like, Stray Kids uh, fan, like, designers. She makes, like, a lot of products. She was there, and I did not realize she was going to be there. I was so excited when I saw her booth because I love her fucking shit so much. She did a collab with another artist, um, where they made like a like a utensil set that had like spoon, fork, and chopsticks, and I bought the chocolate set, and I use it at work genuinely every day. Like I love her merch so much, and I got to buy a whole bunch of her stuff, and then also she traded some photo cards with me at the end of day two. That was a lovely, lovely time. She's a lovely person. I love her shop so much, and I spent so much money, so much money. I spent so much money. I can't stress enough how much money I spent. I I bought no less than eight PC holders, and I got like I just got so many nice little things for myself. I got like a bunch of oh, I got a bunch of like little keychain things, I've I've hooked them all together in like age order and they like dangle from, from my albums now. And I just had like so many nice little like trinkets and things that I bought at that convention. And like, they were all like fan made things and like I got to support like people who also love the things that I love. And they were mostly women of color. It was just like a wonderful time. And I love spending money, especially cause like I go to my state fair every year and recently I've been spending no money there. I used to go and drop again a band anytime I went there because there would be so many vendors there at like the expo hall that were selling a bunch of cool things. And now it's just the exact same vendors year after year after year. So I don't buy anything. And that was so disappointing cause like, I don't love loot. I don't love spending money, but I love having things. I love being a consumer. I love stimulating the economy. So getting to go to Gameplay Fest and being like, it is like, it's like a convention. It's an expo hall with just things that I want to buy. <laughs> it was a wonderful time. I had such a good time. Um, I did not participate in anything else though. And also it's like a multi like thing convention. So it was like a little section for like uh, K-pop. And then there was like an anime one. There was like a sneaker one. Um, I looked a little bit at the anime one, but I'm so far removed from popular anime now. I did not realize like, cause like I was deep in anime when I was like a lot younger, but that was maybe like 10 years ago now. And like all of the new anime now that people are making art and like things where I'm like, I don't, I've seen these characters, but I have no idea what they're from. Cause I'm so far removed from anime now. Um, but it was like so nice to see. So nice to see so many people and their different interests and like their cute little cosplays. And there was a random play dance that I did not participate in at all. Um, my only critique is that there were too many stamp rallies. Way too many stamp rallies. Like, and if you don't know what that is, like there would be like a booth 
And if you bought something from them, they would give you like little, like a punch card, but instead of punches, you get stamps. And like, if you go to like all the other vendors on that card and you buy something from them and you get stamps from them, then you get like a prize or like a freebie or something um, for, for like completing the thing. And I swear, like every single booth had a different stamp rally. I had at least six going. And that was so, I don't, as a, somebody who's a completionist, that stressed me the fuck out being like okay well I guess I have to buy from everybody it did encourage me to spend a lot more money um but it was also just like oh my god why there's so many stamp rallies because on top of that Cave Way Fest has like their own like passport book stamp rally thing and that was so ridiculous I don't I hated the way that that was organized but that's neither here nor there there it was a bunch of children working at that booth who clearly had no actual say in what was going on any who's those it was a great time I had so much fun um that was really it that's all that's really happened in May um, I clearly am busy, so I, I do need to go if there's nothing else to say. Had a great time with TXT. That was truly the big, big moment of May. And it was then, a lot of May was just me prepping for June, because I'm seeing P1 Harmony in like two days, and then I see Megan The Stallion the weekend after, um, and I'm making my P1 outfit right now. Because Kiho wanted to say, oh, the theme is futuristic minimalism. The fuck does that mean, Kiho? What does that mean? He also said pink. So we're trying to do a little bit of both. Um, we'll see if this outfit actually comes together or if it looks stupid. It might be both. Um, and then Megan the Stallion. I did not I did not prep her outfit far enough in advance. I'm, I'm repeating an outfit for her. But I also got a blonde wig. Because uh, I have... Oh, that's another thing. I wanted to be blonde. I spent so much of May... Or maybe it was the beginning of June, end of May, beginning of June, just like trying to figure out how I could be blonde because I've wanted to be blonde for maybe like years now. Um, but trying to get in for like a consultation to become blonde because I would also, you could see how dark my hair is. I've never, I've never processed my hair though. That's the good thing. This is pure virgin hair. So like I would need a platinum card. It'd probably be like $300 to $500 to like go full blonde. Um, and I think it would slay, but also a thing that I considered I want to be brunette for 80s, 80s next month because their whole like vibe right now is like full like Latin core and I feel like my long luxurious curly hair for 80s fully fits the vibe. It would not be as slayful if I was blonde but I do want to be blonde for 17 whenever they want to announce their tour in the fall so I think I will be a warm summer blonde in fall and I think that would be super fun. Um, also maybe I'll just like use this um, like wig. Maybe I'll just get really good at wearing this wig even though it was so hard to try on at the store. I, I, I'm not a wig wearer. It's my first wig, or first proper wig. I've bought like Party City like fun wigs, but like I I now have a proper wig because I'm doing um, Megan's not my fault outfit. So like pink, blonde hair, Regina George moment, because um, it's going to slay. The girlies will eat it up. Because I wanted to do like a snake moment because next year is year of the snake and I'm a, I'm a snake. So I was like, I should do a snake outfit. Her whole like cobra boa moment i should do a snake outfit not realizing that the options for snake outfits are apparently really really bad like i wanted like a like sort of bodycon snake skin-esque outfit and apparently like nobody really solves that or at least not my size so that was annoying and that meant that my dreams were going down the drain so now we're just repeating an outfit trying to make it like life easier and better for me because i have clearly enough to fucking deal with trying to make a fucking pant may was generally overall well it's mostly just like a lot of fucking working i'm working like 55 hours uh every week um and it's really it's sort of getting to me it's been six months uh but we're supposed to be hiring people soon maybe who knows um so we'll see when that happens um oh yeah let me complain about my work for a little bit while we're on the topic i think my boss is fucking weird i again as i, as I mentioned before i'm one of like three people who works at my job um and our overnight person she had to go on medical leave it was very sudden and when my boss found out, she apparently cried. And then she got to work and she talked to me and she cried some more about it. And I'm like, I don't know if you understand that I have no sympathy for you as a manager. Like, this is your job to manage the schedule. You need to find coverage. And she was apparently like so stressed out because she was like, we don't have any coverage. And I'm like, I don't know how the fuck that's my fault. I'm doing overtime so that we can have coverage. I have no sympathy for you in this situation um, because you're a manager. I don't know. Like, I have class consciousness. We are not on the same level. I don't feel any sympathy for you. This is a this is an issue of your own making. Like I don't know what to tell you. And it's just so obvious that they don't understand how much work I actually do at that job. Like I'm a very much an overachiever because I genuinely just don't know how else to be. Like I don't know I don't like know how to do subpar work even if everybody else is like 
doing subpar work. I have to do my absolute best at all times. Like I don't really understand how to do anything else, but that has really shot me in the foot because nobody seems to appreciate the fact that I'm going above and beyond in every single thing that I do. They're just like, oh yeah, that's what Sam does. And I'm like, it does, it, it shouldn't though. Y'all should be doing work too. That's why I'm so excited right now that I'm on, that I'm on vacation. I don't gotta worry about shit. I get to go be hot in the California sun, get me, get me a nice drink, go on some fun rides. I ain't gonna worry about shit. It's just so crazy. Cause it's just, it feels so disrespectful that they don't understand or appreciate any of the work that I do. Cause I'm the only person who really works there. And apparently this is, and I know that this is like a big sentiment with a lot of people and a lot of different places, but like, I swear I'm the only person that works there. And it's absolutely crazy <laughs> that like they don't realize either that I'm doing all the work because like I've been doing all the work but it was very evident and like clearly appreciated by my team they would be like thank you for doing so much work Sam we see all the work that you're doing and I'm like that's all that I need just some acknowledgement and it seems like they don't understand how much work I'm doing because they keep asking me to do more fucking work and I'm like I'm doing the work of like three people and barely getting paid enough for one it's kind of crazy so I definitely want to leave but the, that's the thing is that I've been hoarding like a two years worth of PTO at this point because I've known that Seventeen was going on tour and I knew that when Seventeen went on tour, I would want to use all my PTO to like go on, to go to every North American stop on the tour. So I can't leave until Seventeen goes on tour and maybe at that point, B BTS will be back. So, you know, we'll see. But Jin is back. See, that's why I'm like, I ain't got no worries no more. Jin is back. Um, but yeah. I hate my job, but what else is new? I hope that you are doing well. I hope that your May was good. I hope that you got to see TXT on tour. And I hope that if you didn't, that you will get an opportunity to in the future because they are incredible. I do need to go because I have so many other things that I need to work on today. Um, and once again, I do need to be at the club in a couple hours. So uh, I guess I'm going to start editing this video. I don't know. Wish me luck, y'all. <laughs>